Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna be playing in some Viseart palettes. I am doing five different looks, you guys. But side note, like I just saw myself do this. <laughs> Who else loves <laughs> these sweaters or the jackets, shirts, anything that you can put your thumb through the little holes? I'm obsessed with them. Sorry, I got a little distracted. Anywho, as I was saying, we are going to be playing with the Grand Pro 2, which is the successor or the volume 2 to the first one, which was all matte. This one is all shimmer, as well as the Viseart cool mattes numero two so i'm sure a lot of you are sitting here thinking mel you specifically talked about how you did not like viseart's shimmers and you're completely right i don't i talked about them in my video talking about brands that i was losing interest in and viseart was a part of that sadly because i felt like you know, their shimmers just weren't up to par. I understand the makeup artist aspect of it, but uh, to me, it seemed like they were going more along the consumer route and I wasn't a fan. I just kind of, kind of started falling out of love with them and they reached out to me. So I get this email from Viziart and I'm like, uh-oh, they're going to yell at me. <laughs> I'm just waiting for like... I can't believe you said this, you know, da, da, da. not that I ever thought that they were an unprofessional company, but I just wasn't expecting what I actually got, which was, I saw your video talking about losing interest and I was like, and we would love to send you our newest volume, this guy here of all the new shimmers, because this is a new formula. I talked about, people wanted me to buy this, but because of what I had said, I just decided that I didn't want to try it, even though it was a new formula. They wanted to send it to me and allow me to give some feedback on my thoughts on this. And I was like, I can't believe a company is willing to send product over to somebody who has announced that I don't like your shimmers. And so I was like, wow, I gained so much respect for them in that moment. And I decided, yes, you know, there was no video talked about. It wasn't like, oh, do a video for this or don't do it. It was just give us your thoughts. And so I have been testing this out. I did not want to get the palette, try it once and then decide a biased review like, oh, nope, don't like them. There are several different types of shimmers in this palette and I'm gonna go through everything, but each row is a different type of shimmer basically. And then also we have the new whoop, Cool Mattes palette and I have the original Cool Mattes, which I love. I've always said from the get-go, the original 12 pan matte shadows, I loved these. I absolutely adored them. So I've got this as well. I have ran these into the ground. Like, do you see, I don't know if you can see on camera how dirty this is. It has a sleeve, but I haven't been using it. <laughs> so basically, I'm going to tell you guys about the palettes. I'm doing five different looks for you guys because I wanted to test them all out, be able to give you guys my thoughts and true opinions on the palette. And I also was sent over some Esam brushes, so I was trying these out as well. I tried these shadows in several different ways with my eye set, with my eye not set. I used glitter glue, I've used spritz. I've done a several different things to see how the shadows performed. And I also used the shadows dry, but I want to give you guys my thoughts. Before we do, I'm going to go ahead and get into what this palette is all about. So just like the first one that was all matte, you do get this sleeve right here. We can put it in. I don't really like messing with that. Whenever I put the palette up, it will be in its sleeve, but I don't, I don't know. I don't like messing with the sleeve. So this is $175. And I know a lot of you are familiar now that they had released the Grand Pro 1. And it was $175, and then they have now re-released it without the sleeve for $150. So just keep that in mind. Here are all the shades in the palette. And like I said, each column is a different type of sheen. We have some with just glitters. We have duochromes. We have crystals. Like, And I'm going to go over that. This first row is crystalline highlighters. The second row are prismatic metallics. And yeah, I like this blue. This blue is stunning. Then we have chromatic 
foils in the third column. The fourth column are luxe metallics. And then next up, we have the duo chromes. And then lastly, we have the glittery toppers. So the Grande Pro 2 features six new formulas developed over two years with new pigment technology and prismatic glitters. On the Muse Beauty Pro website, it says the pro tip, the formula of columns two and six have been designed with larger glitter flecks in them. So they recommend using these shades with a mixing medium transformer, such as the Esam Pro mixing medium to set and seal glitter into place feel like pretty much anything is going to work. I've used the glitter glue, I've used the Anastasia, and I have used the lit glitter adhesive. I didn't show every single eye look that I did, but I was playing with this also off of camera. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the swatches of the palette, and I'm going to go by columns instead of rows like I usually do. And to be fair, because I suggest using a mixing medium for rows two and six, I'm going to apply those wet. So just a forewarning. Column one, crystalline highlighters. These are supposed to have a sheer satin coverage with a crystal finish. Column number two, prismatic metallics, and they have a medium coverage prismatic finish. Column three, chromatic foils, full coverage foil finish. Number four, Lux metallics, full coverage velvet finish. Column number five, celestial duo chromes, sheer to medium coverage dual reflective finish. And then the last column number six is the glittery toppers and they have medium to full coverage glitter finish. Now I'm going to show you guys the two matte palettes side by side. This is the original up top, the cool mattes, and this is the new one at the bottom. The shades are not the same and the formula is a little different as well. And on top of that, the new packaging is amazing. You can actually get the pans out, whereas with these, that's not going to happen. But this kind of reminds me of the holiday packaging on like the small five pans from Natasha Denona. It has a little bit of force and it closes, so it's not just going to open up. It's more sleek. I personally like the see-through packaging. I don't do freelance work anymore. I used to, but I still enjoy being able to see the palette through the top. And this palette retails for $80. When I'm doing the looks with the Grand Pro 2, I am incorporating this as well as once I incorporated, I think it's the warm mattes, but I wanted to test this out and I also used this by itself so that you guys could see how it performed. All right, let's go ahead and get into each of these eye looks. They're all very different and I'm going to do the one that I have on currently at the very end. For look number one, I am doing a something more on the cool toned and natural side, and I'm using the cool mattes. This look, I did set my eye. So I'm starting off cool mattes, second shade on a Zoeva 227, and I'm taking this right above the crease as a transition, transition shade. Very, very light shade, so I had to go in with several layers. On a MAC 221, I'm running the same shade right along the lower lash line. Now I'm going to take the first shade in the second row back on that Zoeva 227. And I'm starting on the outer corner and working it into the crease, blending it upwards. First shade, last row, I'm taking a MAC 221 and I am starting again on the outer corner and then directly into the crease to add some depth. Don't bring this shade all the way to the inner corner though. I'm going in with the same brush but now with the black shade and I'm going to pack and blend this only on the very outer corner. Again, this is just going to add a little bit of depth. Now I'm reaching into the Grand Pro and I'm taking the first shade in the third row on an Esam W21. I'm taking that all over the lid, tapping over the black to blend the edges to make sure that they merge together nicely. 
first shade in the fourth row, I am taking that on a MAC 242, and I'm putting that on the brow arch and the inner corner, bringing that shade slightly upward in the inner corner. To, I like to just do that just to brighten things up. Now that white shade had a little bit of blue to it, so I added the Milk Makeup PTO holographic kind of liner to my inner rim to finish everything off. And then I used Boss Up Pop and then just Mascara. Now going into the second look, this is more of like that reddish orange smoky eye. I didn't set the lid this time, so the lid has no shadow on it going in. Starting off with a MAC 242 in the second shade of the first row, I'm packing that all over the lid, all the way up to the crease. And then I'm also taking it on a Wayne Goss number 19 and running it along the lower lash line, back and forth motions. Same shade and the same brush and I'm taking it directly into the crease and lightly blending it upward. This way you're getting a nice blend from the lid up into the crease and transition area. On a Zoeva 227 and the second shade in the matte palette, so I'm now going over to the cool matte, I'm going to blend out the outer edges of the last shade we did. And then one more time, I'm going back into the crease with the original shade on the Wayne Goss number 19 to re-intensify the crease because I felt like I lost just a little bit of it whenever I took that matte shade around the edges. On a MAC 242, fifth shade, top row, wet, and applying that to the inner corner to brighten it up. Third row, fifth shade on a MAC 242. This is the yellow. I'm applying it dry at first to the brow arch. And then to make it more metallic, I'm going back in with it wet, just specifically right at the arch area. Same color, while using it wet, I'm bringing that shade from the inner corner and following it up the natural dip of my eye, making like a little bit of a line for a pop of color. And then to finish off this look, all I did was add on Milk Boss Liner, the top rim, and then mascara to finish everything off. For the third look, this is one of my favorites. I went ahead and grabbed the Warm Mattes palette instead of using the Cool Tones, and my eye was set for this look. I'm going in with a Wayne Goss number 18 with the Warm Matte palette, second row, third shade. Working that on the outer corner and then into the transition area. Same shade, MAC 221, and I'm blending that right along the lower lash line. First shade, last row on a Wayne Goss number 18, and I'm taking it on the outer corner and into the crease to add a little bit of depth. Now we're dipping into the Grand Pro palette. Third shade, fourth row on a MAC 221. First, I'm tapping and blending that color onto the outer corner and then slowly taking it into the crease, but I'm only taking it about halfway. I'm going to do a little cut crease action and I'm going to take the Tarte Shape Tape on a MAC 242 and I'm going to start from the inner corner and I'm going to start cutting out the crease and then I'm going to tap the excess from the brush right over the darkest shade at the edge. New 242 and the second row, fifth shade onto the front portion of the lid. This is that peach shade. I absolutely love this one, but it can be a little dusty. Again, with the MAC 242, I'm taking third row, third shade, and I'm placing this between the dark shade and the peach, tapping over the edges of both to blend. This color was so stunning. I think it looks so much prettier in person. First shade, first row, Wayne Goss number seven, and I'm going to apply that to the inner corner. And then on Wayne Goss number five, I'm taking that peach shade, I'm applying it to the lower lash line, right under where I applied it to the lid, and I'm using it wet this time. Same Wayne Goss number five, 
third row, second shade. Again, I'm using this wet and I'm using it right against the lashes right after where I applied peach. Reaching back for the mattes palette, I'm grabbing a MAC 221 and I'm going to blend out the lower lash line with the first original shade we used. MAC 242, first shade, first row, and I'm going to highlight the brow arch. And that is it for the shadows. To finish off this look, I'm taking a green sparkly liner, which is Avoir Flash Crayon from Linda Hallberg. I put it on the top and the bottom rim, and again, just mascara. The next eye look is the purple smoky eye that I basically mainly use the cool toned palette for, and this is a set eye. I'm starting off with the Sony G Builder 2 and the last shade middle row. I'm packing this all over the lid and then up to the crease, but not passing it. With the MAC 221, I'm taking the same shade and bringing that shade a little past the crease and blending it out. And then I'm going to take it with the same brush and I'm going to work that right along the lower lash line. MAC 217 and the lightest purple in the palette, I'm blending out the lash shade in the crease transition areas as well as the lower lash line. So I'm doing the top and then whatever's left on my brush, I am bringing and just blending out the lower lash line. The darkest purple in the palette and the Sony G Builder 2 tip, like just the tip of the brush, and I'm tapping that along the lash line. This does not have to be perfect because basically I'm going to go back over top of that with the original purple, and it's only going to add a little bit of depth underneath it. So when you're getting your mascara and everything on, you can see a little bit of depth. I'm going to take that dark purple on a Smith 220, and I'm going to stamp and buff that on the lower lash line. Wayne Goss number six and the Grand Pro palette. The fourth row, fifth shade, and then first I'm going to apply this dry to the inner corner. As you can see, it's a little dusty, it doesn't work as well, so all I did was get a, this brush just a tiny bit wet. I got that shade on the tip and then applied it again, and you can see it's much more intense. And then to finish off the shadows, I'm taking a MAC 242 and the white from the matte palette, and I'm taking that to the brow arch. To finish off the look, I used the Milk Liner in Biz, which is a nice blue. I used it at the top and the bottom. This time I used some lashes, and we all know that those were Kiss Ritzy lashes. Now for the look that I am wearing right now, my eye is set and I'm starting off with the cool matte palette. I'm taking the light blue on a Zoeva 227 and I'm starting on the outer corner and I'm slowly going to take it up on the outer edge. I'm going to again pack it on the outer corner and bring it upwards. I'm smoking out the outer edge first and then the excess of the brush is going to go into my transition area. Because this shade is a little bit darker, I don't want it to be too pigmented up in the transition area. I only want it to be pigmented on that outer corner. I'm going to take the same color on the lower lash line using a Royal & Lang Nickel BOM 47. Now I'm going in with a darker blue shade that was directly underneath the last shade we used on an ESOM 33 and I'm going to stamp that on the outer corner and then blend and bring it into the crease. But I'm not going to bring this all the way into the inner part portion of the crease, about three quarters of the way. And then I'm going to stamp it again just to make sure that it is nice and pigmented. And I want to bring it in a little bit on that outer corner. Same brush and now I'm going in with the black shade and I'm taking this on the very outer edge of the corner just to add some depth. 
Now we need some glitter glue. So I'm going to take the Too Faced glitter glue on a 242 and basically you're gonna do like a cut crease kind of action where I'm gonna apply this all over the lid and then tap over the edge of the last dark shade we did so it's still kind of peeking through. And then with another 242, I'm taking that blue glittery shade. You've gotta be careful because this has, it's very dry <laughs> and you've got to basically stamp this on. You're gonna get some fallout so if that bottle bothers you, you're going to want to do your makeup first. I'm putting this all over the lid and then just tapping at the very outer edge. On a Delium 716 second shade fourth row, I'm using this wet and I'm applying this right on the inner corner about halfway out on the lower lash line. Then right after that on the same brush and again wet, I'm taking the fourth shade in the fourth row and I'm applying that on the rest of the eye and slightly tapping over the lighter blue in the front. Now I wanna make sure that the lower lash line is nice and blended out so I'm just taking a clean 221 and I am just running that right along the lower lash line. First shade, fourth row on a MAC 242 and I'm going to apply that to the brow arch. And then I'm gonna take the silver in this palette on a MAC 228, I'm using this dry, I'm applying it to the inner corner and then again, I'm kind of bringing it upwards in that slight little crease area that I have, that natural kind of fold. Oh, it makes such a beautiful difference. And then to finish off the look, I used Milk Boss Liner for the top and lower waterline, and then I added on Kiss Ritzy Lashes. All right, so now we're getting into the review part, and just keep in mind that I have used these several times. This is not a first impressions by any means. So for the Cool Mattes 2, I do think that there is a difference in the matte textures or the matte formula. I prefer the original, but I don't think this is bad. I had heard several people complaining about it, and I'd also seen several people really liking it, but I don't think it is as nice as the original. I don't even know if they actually changed the formula or if they've claimed to at all, but I do see a subtle difference there. I felt like this shade right here, when I applied it to the lid on a set eye, it was just a tiny, tiny bit patchy, but it didn't fall off my eye, like you know, the green from Natasha Denona, and it didn't get any worse through the day. That purple smoky eye was one of my favorites that I had done, and I think that if I just had not set my eye, that it probably wouldn't have been even even that tiny bit patchy at all anyway, so I'm not really worried about it. All of these blended out very nicely. I did get a little bit of fallout, but overall, I like the original better, but I am not mad at this, and based off the quality of this, I would purchase another full-on matte palette if they started bringing out more you know, along this line. Now for the Grand Pro 2, we have a lot to talk about with this. I'm going to try and just kind of cut it down so I'm like not talking your head off. So I have a few of my absolute favorite shades in here. Like there's definitely a lot of colors in here that I really, really like. I love this blue. I love this one right here, but like when you touch it, like these are kind of powdery and dry and flaky. And I purposely showed you this color applied dry and then wet on that purple look because I wanted you guys to see the difference when you actually use it wet. Um, and it's the same thing with this yellow shade. I really thought that I was going to hate this whole column because like they just feel dry to me. So I was like, oh, this is not gonna be, this is not gonna be promising. Like I was so scared that I was going to not like this palette and then like write back to Viseart and be like, I'm so sorry, I hate it. But it's not the case. It's, I'm very, very happy about that. But there are some things to go through. This column right here, like I used this one on this eye look and I used it dry. Had no problems, it was very intense, it was beautiful. I also used this shade dry, beautiful. The yellow shade, gorgeous. Like, And you're only gonna get a little bit more intense 
intensity with this row if you use it wet. So I loved these, especially this one. This is like your classic kind of foiled over beautiful shade. The only one I feel like is a little bit different is this purple one. So while you can get this to work, it works best on an unset eye or using it wet in my personal opinion. This row right here, I love the shade. This is what I have my brow arch. It has this slight blue icy tone to it that I think is so stunning. And I really like this shade as well. Some of these are just slightly drier than others, but they all work like brow arch, inner corner very, very well. For the lid, I suggest getting these wet if you want them to be intense. But if you don't, they do go on the lid dry pretty well. They're a little bit more sheer and it's gonna be something more along the lines of like work friendly. This column here, again, no issues with these. These work so well. Let's see. I actually did not use this purple one there, but here we have those. I liked these just a little bit better on the wet side or unset eye. So it has some kind of sticky base to sit to, to, to attach to. Not glitter glue adhesive, but just not a set eye. This I used dry on my outer corner in one of the looks with a 221. It adhered, it blended, it was beautiful. I super duper love this shade. I didn't use this on camera, but this is gorgeous for an all over brown smoky eye. This row is the one that's going to give you problems if you do not use it wet. You have to use this wet or you have to use some kind of mixing medium. I think that this should have been included with this row and this row being the ones do you need to use a mixing medium with, I think you'd need to as well with these. When I use this shade on my brow arch, it clung to it just fine, but there's no other shadows really other than the set base up here. If you use these wet, I think it works better. I used this one on an unset eye, so it worked really well. It adhered and it was fine, but this is one of the smoother ones. This one up here as well, again, one of the smoother ones. These two right here are a little bit more, more chunky, and then this one, oh, it kind of reminds me of stars and rockets, but this row is problematic. You have to use, just like they said, and with this row as well, you need to use a mixing medium, Fix Plus. Fit, Fix Plus will work with this row right here. I used this one up top in my tutorials and I used it dry, it was fine, but it wasn't as impactful as it could have been. If I had used that wet, it would have been way more intense, but I liked it dry. These other shades, this one, wet, like where I have it right here, I just think it is beautiful. But again, using this one just wet is going to be your best bet. These, I think glitter glue, Glitter adhesive, something along those lines is going to be what you need to do to get these to work. Especially this last one is almost like chalk with a little bit of glitter in it. But if you use it with a glitter glue, it's so much better. And this is the shade that I have on my eyes today. You can see the reflex of the glitters that are in it all like when I turn my head all on my lid, and it's beautiful. But dry. These are flaky, messy, just a mess. I did get quite a bit of fallout with a lot of shades in this palette, but not that big of a deal. I was able to just wipe it away and we were fine. And I found that through the day when I was wearing these, I didn't have any issues with anything falling on my face afterwards. Because I wore like every time I did an eye look that I used on camera, I wore it all day long. One of them I even wore to the movies. So Overall, a great palette, but I'm only going to suggest this to somebody who is willing to work with it because if you are not, if you want to be able to tap your brush into it, like say Pat McGrath, and just be able to just put it on your eye and go, that's not what the majority of this palette is. That is mainly things that you're going to have to use a sticky base or some kind of mixing medium. I feel like I'm saying that over and over again but you can create such beautiful looks out of this. I love that you're not getting a bunch of the same shades. And 
it does pair quite nicely with the Grand Pro 1 if you have that one. I do want to mention that I don't like the $175 price tag. I think this is limited edition, but the first one was limited edition and then now it's back again. I wish they would just release this without the sleeve and keep the $150 price tag. I can understand that with Viseart. You know, these are 80. It makes sense that this would be 150, but those are my thoughts on the palette, and I definitely think they did a great job listening to those of us. If you are going to be selling to the consumer, the ones that just like to play in makeup, I like that they actually really tried to do something different because these are different than any of the other palettes that I had gotten, like the little mini... Um, I don't even remember what they're called now. Like the Nuance palette, the Minx, you know, the Trist, uh, all those, these are different. So that's my opinion on this palette. I know you guys were seeing that I was wearing these in some of my videos and you're like, wait, what? What's going on? <laughs> so those are my thoughts on those palettes. And now for the brushes, Absolutely love this Esam 33. This is great if you want something stiffer than the MAC 221 and something shorter. Very, very nice. And then I really, really like the Esam number 21. This is a good alternative to the MAC 242. It's a little bit smaller and just a tad bit thicker, but it still does the same job. And I think that this is the best bet I have seen from any of the brushes that I have collected as far as a MAC 242 dupe. This one, um, I have not gotten to really play with yet. I think I used it for my brow arch, but it feels like the same kind of good quality. I believe all of these are synthetic, if I am not mistaken. I believe these are synthetic. Correct me if I am wrong down below, but I do like these brushes so far. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know what you think of these palettes, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.